The Buzz with Jess Lujan. Hey, we're back with my in-studio guest, of course, uh, Judge Liz Barrett-Anderson. We're talking drug court here in, um, in our, our, our courts here in Guam. Judge, uh, again, drug court. Uh, we're talking about, uh, of course, the, these offenders, first-time offenders. Uh, we were talking in the break about folks who, who had previous con or had a conviction earlier before, before drug, drug the, the inception of, of, of drug court. And this really happened to me a couple times in, in when I was in the legislature where people would, would come um, to my office and said, you know, Senator, how can, how can you help me? I'm currently working right now, um, you know, in one of the bases, um, we're subcontractors. Now, because we renew the contract, everybody has to, again, resubmit their, their um, court clearances, police clearances, and, and all that. And I've never been, haven't had any other conviction. I had this one when I was a, a stupid, stupid boy <laughs> at the time. Never got in trouble, but because of that, I'm not going to be hired. I'm going to be. I'm going to be fired. We tried. Uh, you know, there there was amendments, and we were working with mm -hmm. with the courts to 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 try to to work with with folks that fell under situations before mm -hmm. the inception of, of drug mm -hmm. court. I don't remember whatever happened with that, but how do we deal with with folks like that? Because there are numerous. I mean, it, it has to be by legislation. Yeah, yeah. There has the legislature has to uh, attack that. What do we do? with these young adults who made a mistake and have a felony conviction mm -hmm. that will last the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to get jobs. Sure. Um, the legislature needs to, yeah. to address that. Um, perhaps there is a possibility of re-entry courts, mm -hmm. of allowing these people to come back into the judicial system through a re-entry court. Mm -hmm. But re-entry court is usually after you're out of prison and come back in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can do a re-entry court if you, uh, your conviction was 10, 15 years ago before sure. drug courts, uh, but it is a legislative fix, absolutely. Sure. No, no, absolutely, and this particular yeah. person at that time, you know, they said, you know, just the only fix to this is, is, is an executive pardon, you That's know. True. Uh, That's true. That's true. But there's no way I would be able to get it, you know. They're not leaving office, <laughs> you know, tomorrow and all that. They usually do it on their way out. Right. Uh, so it's not going to happen if I'm going to wait for that, you know, that's another four years. And it's not this administration. It was a previous administration, but they said, uh, how can we do that? I know we were attempting to fix that. I know it had to be done legisl legislatively. I, I don't remember what happened to our amendments. I don't, I don't think it you know, I mean, there were, I think there were a couple of us, but I don't think we were able to convince the a majority to, we can to get that moved to. Our colleagues. Our colleagues, yes, there. yes, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Our that's colleagues, right, yeah. maybe they can take this yeah. up. Well, hopefully, again, because yeah, okay. there are still folks that fall, fall under that uh, situation. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. let's switch over to juvenile drug oh, court. my heart, your, yes. Your forte. <laughs> Criminal, uh, 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 juvenile drug court, successful as well. Absolutely successful, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think a, little, a lot easier than it is with the adult drug mm -hmm. court because you can capture the kids in middle school, you can capture them in high mm -hmm. school, and the number one drug that uh, children come in uh, to juvenile drug court is, is marijuana mm -hmm. uh, and alcohol, and every time I ask, where did you get the marijuana? Oh, my friend. I said, I want to find that friend because mm -hmm. he's spreading marijuana all around the mm -hmm. schools, but you can absolutely and, and much faster and simpler change the life of a juvenile than it is when the person is uh, addicted as mm -hmm. an adult. Sure, So sure. capture them at, uh, at the mm -hmm. early stages. Now, now, as, 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 again, the person that sat there and, and saw this, mm -hmm. um, do you see more and more of our kids? Are they getting younger now in regards to their drug use? What are, what it's are not some more or less, uh, it's just it's there. It's just there. It's there. I mean, there. You, you were in high school, it was there, yeah, it was, and it it's was still there. there. Yeah. What we see more of uh, happening, uh, not so much marijuana as it is um, prescription drugs, drugs. Yeah. gasoline, the sniffing is glue. Is and, and glue. Yeah. It is. It's, hor really? it's a horrific no. on, on the yeah. brain. And uh, I think the other one is uh, bath salts. Mm. So the other kinds of less expensive, easy to get a hold of, these candy drugs as well, mm -hmm. are making their way into our middle schools and uh, mm. possibly down into the elementary. That is the scary point. Mm -hmm. That is very, very scary. Now, it, what's the youngest that you've seen? An 11-year-old middle school really? young boy. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, wow. He was so cute. He was just so small. Uh, I couldn't possibly think, what? <laughs> Um, and again, at 11-year-old, why is this child being brought into mm -hmm, drug court? Mm -hmm. 
because perhaps mom or dad mm -hmm. or someone in their family has mm -hmm. marijuana, so they mm -hmm. bring yeah. the, the marijuana to school to show off. Now, juvenile drug court. Mm -hmm. You got to have either the parents or the guardian involved uh, with oh, this. Okay. I mean, I mean, and and they they've got to be. <laughs> I smile because we drag the parents in. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. they they've they've got to be th this this is Front this is not just and center. Absolutely, absolutely. Front and center. Yeah, and and so when they go through this program as well, they do this as a team, right? Oh, yeah. All of them? <laughs> I, I teach the parents yeah. as well. Okay. And you can see when a child comes into drug court with a problem, mm -hmm. you can see that that child is a reflection of each of the parents that are mm -hmm. flanking them. Mm -hmm. And through the process, the parents begin to realize that they need to change their parenting mm -hmm. skills. They need to pay more attention to that child. And within six months, you'll see the face of that young man or young woman uh, change mm -hmm. and uh, the parents shape up uh, yeah. a lot too. I don't have as much control over the parents, mm -hmm. but I, I used to try and scare them mm -hmm. that I did. Yeah. Um, no, 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 <laughs> let, me ask, let me ask you this. When you, when you catch them at juvenile drug court, mm -hmm. What are the chances of them, or have you seen them, because you've caught them that early, that you don't have them now in, in adult drug court? Because uh, they, they um, I, after I moved from juvenile drug court, I went to um, regular court, mm -hmm. and I did see some of them move into adult drug court, uh, not adult drug, but uh, um, adult court. Uh, yeah. But not Offenses. adult drug court. <laughs> yeah. uh, burglary, et cetera, mm -hmm, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and. Uh, or, and so, you know, my, my staff would say, Your Honor, he was in juvenile drug court. So it's not a perfect uh, mm -hmm. system. Sure. But the recidivism in any drug court, whether juvenile or adult, mm -hmm. goes from a 35 to 40 percent recidivism down to below 15. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not perfect. And when you do see them in juvenile drug court become or go into the adult criminal justice system, it breaks your heart. It mm -hmm. breaks your heart. And I've had them face me, and I went, "What happened?" Yeah. Uh, so it's a heartbreaker there. And obviously, um, I, I, again, the folks that you see, they don't discriminate, uh, whatever race, what, whatever uh, income level. I, I mean, it, it it gets anybody, right? I mean, it, it, it's it gets anybody and mm -hmm. everybody, uh, um, all genders as well. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? The, the challenges you have, I mean, you obviously have uh, some great successes, but mm -hmm. uh, how do you tackle, again, the, the financial part of the situation where you can, where you can always do better with, with more finances? We just need to continue to support therapeutic courts, juvenile drug court, adult drug court, family violence court, DWI court, mental health court, veterans court, to continue to, to, to uh, support therapeutic courts because they do work. They do there work. we go. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate oh, it. Thanks, you know, we, we've got the final of the voice tonight. Oh, yeah. I'm, Your favorite I'm as well. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. But thank you very much. You know, now that you're a little freer, you're not necessarily on uh -huh. the bench, uh, maybe we'll talk about the Constitution or Constitution. Call me. I'll give you a call. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank, you, Jess. thank you. Thank you. Yes, she's married to my first cousin. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> hey, I'll talk to you tomorrow morning at the Buzz. This is 63. Talk more about.